Hello and welcome to Wednesday Morning Ministries. This is in cooperation with Tony Broom Ministries and South Henderson Pentecostal Holiness Church Facebook Live. Be sure to check the link out here, share it with your friends, and let them know that we're broadcasting for Jesus. We welcome you for the music and the preaching from God's Holy Word. Jesus is precious.
Jesus Christ, God's only Son, fought the battle and he won. speak to you today from Isaiah chapter 52 verses 13 through 15 and here's our thought Jesus makes it all right Jesus makes everything all right the scripture tells us in Isaiah 52 about the suffering Savior about one who would come and die for the sins of the whole world behold my servant shall deal prudently he shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. Jesus would be praised. He would be given honor and glory like no other. He is the Son of the Most High God, and He would come as one who would deal prudently. The Scripture tells us that Jesus went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. He did not come to sin, sin into the world. He did not come to bring a curse into the world. Rather, He came to deliver us from the curse of the law. He came to save us from all the penalty and sins that the law had to put on us. He came to undo all the evil works of the evil one. My servant will deal prudently. Jesus went about doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. And he comes to destroy the works of the evil one. 1 John chapter 3 verse 8. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. He shall be exalted and extolled. That word extolled is a high word of praise. He will be very high because of his wisdom and because of his goodness and exaltation. He is exalted. The king is exalted on high. I will praise him. Jesus makes it all right because of his goodness and his wisdom and his exaltation. As many were astonished, and that's another word for astonished, at him, his visage was so marred more than any man, and his form more than the sons of men. 
When our Lord came, He came not only to be exalted and be praised, but He came to suffer like no other had ever done. As many were astonished at thee. It's like people would look and say, Wow, I've never seen anybody treated like he is treated. I've never seen anyone ridiculed and spat upon. I've never seen anyone mishandled and mistreated like our world has mistreated him. As many were astonished at you, his visage or his countenance, his features were so marred more than any man when Jesus was mistreated, when he was spat upon and they whipped him with those stripes we we're healed. And because of his mistreatment, he was so abused and he was so manhandled and he was so beaten that you could not even recognize who he was. His visage is so marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. This is talking about his suffering and humiliation. The scripture tells us that it pleased God to bruise him. God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Because God loved us so much, he sent Jesus to suffer and die on a cruel, rugged cross. Jesus is still the answer for the world today. Above him, there is no other. Jesus is still the only way. He is the answer for the ills of mankind. He is, is the answer for sickness and disease. He is the answer for virus. He is the answer for the unseen enemy. He is the answer for troubles and trials that would come into our life. He does not cause them. Rather, he is the answer for them. Jesus would not send sickness into the world and send sickness on you and then have to turn around and come and heal you from that which he put on you. That's not my God. My God came to undo all those evil things and that's why he suffered. Isaiah chapter 53 talks about him suffering like no other. And here in chapter 52, he suffered. His form was so unrecognizable, more than any of the sons of men, the suffering and humiliation. Philippians chapter 2 talks about him being humbling himself and becoming obedient even to the death of the cross. And that's why God has highly exalted him and given a name which is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. God has exalted Christ given him a name above every name, given him a position above all principality and power. When he wrought in Christ the power of God that raised Jesus from the dead, set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and dominion and might. This is our Savior. He suffered. He was rejected, despised and rejected. He was humiliated. But because of that, the next verse says in Isaiah 52, So shall he sprinkle many nations. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. For that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. This is talking about his redemption and coronation. Because he has redeemed us, so shall he sprinkle many nations. This was just speaking to me today, the Lord was from this verse, because it didn't say that he would just sprinkle many people. It said that he would sprinkle many nations. Jesus is able to bring nations to their knees. He's able to get your attention. If you don't think for a moment that he can allow things to come to a standstill and stop where they are, it could be businesses, it could be churches, it could be homes, it could be daycares, it could be whatever the thing is. He is able, governments, kings and rulers, he's able to get your attention. And not only does he want to get our attention in that way, but he wants to get your attention through the everlasting good news of the gospel that he can sprinkle many nations. How will he sprinkle them? With what will he sprinkle them? With his precious blood. There is a blood flow that comes from Calvary. 
Emmanuel, brothers and sisters, the fountain that's filled with blood that comes from Emmanuel's veins that cleanses us from all of our guilty stains. The kings shall shut their mouths at him. No more galting, no more making fun, no more poking fun, no more disbelief and unbelief, no more making laws that would go against God. Now he's got your attention. Now he's got you in a gotcha hole. And he knows what to do to cause you, not only to say uncle, but to cause you to come to your knees. The kings will shut their mouths at him because he is the one who is ruling. He is the one who is not only offering salvation, but he is the one who is the real king. For that which had not been told them shall they see. They think they're so smart. They think they're so intelligent, but they've got a lot to learn. We all have. And that which had not been told them shall they see. And that which they had not heard shall they consider because he is the one who is the real king. When he comes to the earth the second time, he will come to rule and reign on David's throne and he will rule not only as king in Jerusalem, but he will rule forever and ever because his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. He is the one to rule. He is the one to reign. Isaiah talks about him being the governor of the nations, the one who is called council Counselor, wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The government will be on His shoulders because He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Whatever you need today, He is there for you. Jesus makes it all right. He makes everything all right. He will never leave you nor forsake you. When you listen to the news and you look at the internet and you listen to the radio or you read the newspaper, there's all kind of doubt and confusion that would go on in your heart and make you not know which way you're going. Who says this and who says that? They say one thing one day and another thing another day because nobody really knows. But Jesus knows. God the Father knows. God the Holy Ghost knows. And nothing catches him by surprise. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He has not changed from yesterday to the, today. He's still the same yesterday and today. And neither will he change from today to tomorrow. He will always be the same. If he were changeable, then you couldn't depend on him. You couldn't trust what he had to say. But he is always the same. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will fulfill all of God's promises to you. In him, the promises of God are yes, and they are amen. He is not one that says one thing one time and another thing another time. He's not one to be confusing with his message. He says what he says, and he means what he means, and he means what he says. He knows what he's talking about. Jesus makes it all right. He will come to get you and take you to heaven. He said that. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare that place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. That's a promise from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. And he tells us in God's Word, I will come and get you and take you to be with me. And the book of the Revelation talks about it. Surely I come quickly. Even so, amen. Come, Lord Jesus. He gives us a promise that he will come again. So wherever you are today, and ever how you're listening, if you're watching us on Facebook, listening to the podcast, ever how the means of communication are, the thing that's important is God's Word. God's Word reaches you wherever you are, and He is able to solve your problems. He's able to answer your questions, and He's able to do what you need done. 
I want to have prayer today. And as I have prayer, I encourage you to pray, to talk to Jesus, because He's there to make everything all right. Our Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. I thank you, Lord, that there's nothing that catches you by surprise. I thank you, Lord, that you have the whole world in your hands. You have the tiny little baby in your hands. You have the wind and the rain in your hands. You have the sun and the moon in your hands. You got the whole world in your hands. And I pray, Lord, today that you would touch the hearts and lives of everyone that's watching, that's listening. I pray, Lord, that you would just do great and mighty things. Lord, we thank you that you're more powerful than sickness. You're more powerful than disease. You're more powerful than virus. You're more powerful than bad news. I thank you, Lord, that in Jesus' name, this thing must die. In Jesus' name, it must die and reverse its effects upon your people in Jesus' name right now. And we thank you, Lord, for sending forth your word very swiftly to go in power and glory and touch the lives and hearts of those who need you to do great things in their life right now. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would be exalted. And as our subject has said, Jesus makes it all right. We thank you, Lord, for making it all right in our heart, for making it all right in our soul, for making it all right in our life. Jesus is right for whatever's wrong in my life. And I praise you today, Lord, that you're able to do great things in our churches, in our homes, in the lives of everyone that's watching and listening right now. We commit this to you. We give you praise and we give you glory in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. God bless you and thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening to this. This has been in cooperation with Tony Broom Ministries and South Henderson Pentecostal Holiness Church, our Facebook Live, and any other way that you listen to us. We appreciate you. You feel free to call us, get in touch with us, call the church with your prayer requests, email the prayer requests, prayer at shphc.org and we're here to serve you we're here to reach out and bless you and to touch your life today but more importantly jesus is right there with you when we cannot be reached he's always there just as close as a whisper of his name may god bless you we'll talk to you real soon